Hey folks, and welcome to my thoughts on a comic. And today's comic is Vibe Why Me, Issue 2 by DC Comics. This is also the new 52. Now there is uh, some uh, kicking and uh, punching and shooting, and there's a uh, sort of an alien facility prison thing. And here as well, so if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Also, spoilers. <sighs> Alright. Let's get to the names. Took me so long to find the page with the fucking names today. <laughs> and and but at some point, at first I thought, they didn't pull one, really? Because I looked, I'm like, where the fuck is it? And after finishing this bloody comic, I finally found it. Alright, so, uh, Jeff O. Johns and Andrew, I don't know how to pronounce that, are the writers. Uh, Pete Woods and, um, um, and Andros, I don't know how to pronounce that, did the pencils. Uh, uh Sam Parsons and Pete Woods and... Bit did the inks, Hi, uh, H-I-F-I -I did the colors, letters are by Carlos M. Mongrel, probably botch that, uh, David Flinch and uh, Sonia Oba Obeck, probably botch that too, did the cover, uh, Kate Stewart is the assistant editor, and Brian, I don't know how to pronounce that, is the senior editor. All of this, as usual, as usually, will be down below. All right. Now, uh, if I sound a bit uh, like I'm sighing or something, that excuse me, my foot is trobing. It is very annoying and distracting. And this comic didn't help me because, you know, it's it's good to distract yourself from the pain. That way it's easier. Well, I can tell you this comic did not distract me from the pain. If anything, I was probably more concentrated on that than on the story, and occasionally I had to go back to see what happened in a page that I just read, because I forgot. Which is not a good sign. Now, before I get to the story, let me just say, um, the talent of the two cover artists is wasted on this issue, particularly. This is the second one. I, I didn't read any others, so uh, but I gotta say in here it's wasted because this is a pretty cool cover. I and mean, look at that. There's some action going on there, and there's. I know I said there's shooting, but there isn't really that much action in this comic. At least not fight wise. So I think they're they're wasted on this issue. This should have been put with an issue with some fighting in it, some serious fighting, not... Well, not this, not really, not a lot of fighting. Hmm, that kind of looks like Thanos. Right, so anyway. So we have our young gentleman uh, here named Cisco, who I've never heard of. His superhero name is Vibe. He can make vibrations. I kind of wonder if that's the Cisco from the Arrow, and not Arrow, from the Flash TV show. Because I, I do understand that later on in seasons they all got powers. And Cisco maybe also has powers. So I wonder if it's like the based on that Cisco. <sighs> Alright. So I don't know. So we start our story with this really cool alien appearing. It looks like a combination of a cyborg, uh, Cthulhu, and, um, who else, um, let's see, Cthulhu, and who else was I thinking of, um, I don't know, maybe like this, um, oh, Robot, uh, Cthulhu, and, um, oh, uh, Green Goblin. I don't know, that's what I thought. So he appears, he, um, uh, People can't understand what he's saying. Like he approaches this uh, gentleman here and can't understand what we're saying. Then we cut to our uh, future hero, Cisco. This one, and that's his brother, Dante, right here. 
Dante constantly eats throughout this comic. At least in the parts that we see him. Well, not constantly, but mostly. So, he's uh, trying on uh, the costume he collected for himself. Uh, apparently, he's been called by this program to join the Justice League of America. And he's uh, excited and also scared and also wondering... Not scared. He's wondering why they want him to join. He's wondering who's the other team members. And they also gave him his name, Vibe. So he's putting on his costume and asking his brother's opinion while his brother uh, stuffs chips in his mouth. So yeah, they have that, and then they hear help out of their the from outside. Also, it looks like they had another brother, maybe, and he died or something. And they also have their dad. No mention of the mom. All right. So and here, there's um, you know, this proves my point that. The editors are shit in modern comics, I think. Because look, this is daylight. Daylight. It's nighttime. You want to tell me this is like some kind of curtain they have that makes their window show daylight? Because they don't really live in a fancy technological apartment. And do you want to fucking tell me it took them a fucking entire day till evening to reach this man? Also, how far away was he that they heard his cry for help? Also, why the fuck Dante's coming as well with a bag of chips? For fuck's sakes, people, what is this? Seriously, daytime, nighttime, what happened? It's not even sunset. Okay, fair enough, if it was sunset, alright, so... The sun was setting down, and okay, it's fucking nighttime. What happened in between? Please, someone explain to me this. Ugh, anyway. This man helped someone stole something, so Vibe runs after this person, who turns out to be a child who stole some Snickers. Barbs. And he's terrified, and his dad's gonna be angry. But at first I thought, oh, is this, like, is this kid very poor and he's hungry? Like, they don't have anything to eat. But no, just looks like he just stole some Mars bars and vibes like, you know, he's using his powers. And the kid's and the kid is terrified, so vibe like, uh, just don't do it again, no, we are a little secret. There's a brother running out the chips, fuck me. So, he tells him, so, you, you know, you... You stopped the kid from stealing some Snickers. So apparently Vibe just went to the store clerk and gave him a buck for the Snickers. The Snickers really cost that low? Just curious. And then uh, this agent appears who's in contact with uh, Cisco. His name is Gun. He said, to, I think that's, there's two ends. So. Anyway, his name is Gun and he looks like I don't know, kind of like a combination of Fury and uh, Blade and a dickhead government person. And he's a dick. So, you know, he's like, I can't, you know, you told your brother you're not supposed to tell. He tells him, don't worry, it's cool. My brother won't tell. Another mistake. Why is he gray? Okay, why? He's not fucking Colossus. Why is he gray? From here to here, what happened? He's sitting in his car. Even if there's light on him, why is he gray? This gentleman is clearly black. Why is he gray here? Okay, you put light on him, he's not gonna look gray. Where was the editor? What, sleeping after too much porn the night before? I mean, okay, fair enough, you want to have some fun. But really, you got confused from this to this. To gray. Why? How? Who looked at this? Yes, you see, when, when someone's in a car at night, they look gray inside. If you, if, you, if you look into the car. How? Why? Who? <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, Agent Dan tells him we'll be in contact, blah, blah. 
Then we move on, um, our nice alien. Seriously, out of everyone, I like Dante, Cisco, and the alien. So then we have our alien, he's trying to talk to people who are surprisingly not running away screaming, but actually telling him, we don't understand you. Which, the, the, you know, good for them. They're being friendly to aliens. That's nice. Uh, that's progress, I guess, from screaming your lungs out and running. But still, why are they not running? What gives? The fuck? The, the... Anyway, he sees some uh, terrorist group on TV and smashes the window. In the meantime, we're back with Dante and Cisco in the house. Uh, Cisco's trying to figure out who else is on the team. Dante is stuffing his face. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're teenagers, so he's a grown boy. Then their dad comes in. Uh, Dante quickly shuts the computer. Suddenly, uh, Cisco's powers start to work, and he feels vibrations, and he feels our alien. Like, his dad notices he has a headache, and he has this conversation in front of his dad. Like, okay, well, let me just explain. Hello. Our sensors detected an incursion, whatever. Yeah, I can sense it too. Where is it? Like, he's having this conversation in front of his dad. Wouldn't that seem weird? Anyway, two cops arrive, and they see our Cthulhu robot alien. And smartly decide to shoot at it. Because, you know, alien and regular guns, totally gonna work. And totally safe to do. No, seriously, that's dangerous. Don't do that. If you come across an alien, run screaming. So then he uses alien technology and appears behind them. Oh, was it? Oh. <laughs> I like this part, though. He's like, well, bullets work. And the other cops, well, whining won't. It's got a point there. All right, Cisco arrives. Um, what do I do? What do I do? He sees the alien. I, I don't know if he's invisible or he sees, like, the... He, he saw that he climbed the top of the building before. I'm not sure. So then... Um, Agent Gunn, who's a dick, tells him, well, go after him. He's like, I can't fly. And then this dickhead says, well, I'll just have to tell the cop's widow he took the other cop hostage. That you, that, that was your excuse. And I'm like, motherfucker, you're the government fucking agent. You're the responsible adult here. Why aren't you moving your ass? I mean, this kid is presumably in training to be on this team bullshit. I don't know. Irresponsible assholes. So he uh, explodes, uh, just uses this thing to climb on the roof. Right here. Um, it's, a, it's a pole. I think it's a, pho a phone pole? Not sure. And then he's like, I don't have to pay for this, do I? Alright, so he climbs up, as you can see. And he's like, D stop, you know, D surrender. I'm going to have to... Look at this face! My god, I wanted to cry! Look at this face! I wanted to give this alien a hug! I mean, look at those eyes! That That is beautiful, actually, you know? The, the artist, like, well done! That is, like, truly a sad, miserable face! It's, it's amazing! It's so touching, even! De definitely good. So, you know, uh, Cisco's like, okay, so something obviously is wrong. The, the alien tries to give him this message, which uh, Cisco tells him I can't read. That, that was, uh, for me, the best bit in this comic. Alright, and then we have, uh, and then the asshole agent gun just shoots at the alien. No, because he's friendly like that. And, uh, I, I don't know, I hope the alien's alive. No, we, we're not told. Uh, and then he tells him, well, this was a war declaration. Yes, always believe the government agent with you. They always tell the truth. In comics, I mean. And then he's like, but he, he wasn't going to attack. 
And God is like, okay, kid, go home. We got this. You don't understand the dangers. And then we see bitch Amon Amanda Waller in her uh, skinny version. Right? And I see like a video about Amanda Waller where she was quite the big lady, so this is like the modern. I don't know, she has this message. So it looks like Amanda Waller is running things, and that can only mean one thing. Run. Things are about to get really shit for you. Now seriously, there's one thing I briefly learned about Amanda Waller. Don't mess with her. Mm -mm. So apparently she has this alien lady in her this prison cell. And this is a letter from her dad, which she makes the lady translate to her. And he wants to know how she is because she keeps traveling dimensions. And I, how is this lady an alien? Like, she's presumably in this facility that belongs to Amanda. Why hide her alien form? Like, does it matter? Who, who's gonna, like... It's obviously some form of jail or something or a detaining facility. And Amanda isn't letting her go, so why keep up the charade? Unless it's like the Krypton aliens who look human, so fair enough. Yeah, kind of made you think of the, like, the aliens in uh, Faith, our obese superhero. There weren't really much aliens. It could have just been written as a cult, and it would have worked all the same. Like, change a couple of things, involve some technology, and voila. I mean, no honesty, it was, it was pretty pointless to say there were aliens. Like, with her, it's like, no, no eyes, nothing. And we're told she's an alien. Okay, why human-looking? I don't know. Anyway, Amanda tells her to start writing the letter, and she asks her to let her go. Then, 24 hours later, our boy Cisco's in the facility. He's all excited. He tells his brother that he got a basket and shit, and he's got a new outfit. Hooray. And then we have the mayor saying some bullshit speeches. To the masses, you know, well, we're so proud, blah, blah, blah. Then this is another asshole agent who reports back to Amanda. And then she calls um, Agent Dick Gunn and tells him uh, we need to put the boy through a, you know, a test. And he's like, to, with, against the Flash? No, he's not ready for the Flash. So you see, I think this is a team of aliens because we have Hawkman. Um, Man Hawk? No, Hawkman. We have, I think, th that's meant to be like John, Martian, uh, Martian Manhunter. Ow. And also a bunch of other guys, I'm not really sure. Katana is for some reason. And again, gray. Her skin's not gray around the mouth. What the fuck? And then that's it. This is the last page where. No, and he says someone, she says uh, to the agent gun dick, someone less experienced. And we get this blurry vision. I think it might be that, um, there's a lot of speedsters, I know that. I think it might be the one with the uh, yellow red suit. Um, I don't remember his name, but I think it might be him. But again, it's, it's hard to tell based on this blur. I mean, this does look yellow and red, but I'm not sure. And that's it. And that's where I fucking finally found the names. And that's it. I'm not going to scroll any further. It's just ads in here. So overall, this wasn't really that much of a captivating story for me. I mean, the, the part with the alien, the, like the messenger alien, that was interesting. I wanted to learn more about him. But the rest of it was like, eh, not really all that exciting. Again, the, the cover doesn't live up to the, you know, the, the, there's not any action to live up to this cover. There's this fighting aliens, ooh, we're in for a ride. Eh, not really. So yeah, story's not too impressive, but again, it's just a second issue. Maybe it gets better afterwards. The art mostly is good, especially the, the one of the alien. That was gorgeous. Uh, obviously, the editors needed to work a little a bit better and pay attention to coloring. 
Like, seriously, this isn't like a little smidge of color. It's like big chunks. Hello? What? Everyone ship shaped skin too? Good to know. Good to know. Hey, no, that's it. C cover definitely very good. Yeah, that's about it. Those are really amazing. And definitely not good at distracting from pain. Ow. Alright, folks, so that is it. So let me know if you heard about Vibe and if you know if that's actually Cisco from the Flash TV show. What do you think about this one? Until next time, bye!